All right, we are live. Thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Nora Bloom, I'm with Travel Leaders. And every week we bring you some uh, new um, ideas for travel. Some, um, some of our, our friends from different companies come in and talk to us. And Mary Margaret has been joining us every month and really focusing on different rivers that Ama Waterways does. I'm very excited to hear about the Danube River today. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mary Margaret. Thank you all again for joining us. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat or the Q&A and uh, take it away. Thank you so much, Nora. It's my pleasure to be here today. And it's very, very exciting for me to talk to you today about the Danube River. And just kind of an FYI, for 23, we just opened the Danube. So for if you've got any thoughts of traveling in 23, please talk to your Market Square advisor and get it booked. All right, because it is now wide open as far as our system goes. But let's let's let me talk about a little bit first about Ama Waterways. In case you have not been on any of my other press, uh, webinars that I've done with Market Square, we are family owned and operated, and we have we were founded back in 2002, and by three families, Rudy Schneider, our co-founder and president. He's also our architect. So he designs all of our ships, but he's also known as the godfather of river cruising. Christine Karnst, our co-founder and executive vice president. And Jimmy Murphy was the third, I'd like to say musketeer of the, of the three families. But unfortunately, Jimmy Law, um, passed away in 2014, but we're very fortunate to have his son, Gary, uh, as one of our co-owners and our senior vice president of sales. And I, I, I tell you that, you know, these owners are hands-on and they, not unusual for them to show up on one of our ships unannounced and ask you to join them or ask to be joined uh, if you're having breakfast at one of our, uh, at one of the tables. But once you travel with us, you are part of the AMA family and we welcome you. I show you this slide because number one, the ships on your right, we own them. Um, they're paid for. We have no debt as Rudy's quote says on the right. And our last 10 ships that we put in the water were paid for in cash, including the AMA Siena, the AMA Lucia and the AMA Delia, all right? And we weren't just sitting on our, you know, our hands in 2020. We took the Amabella and the Amaverte, right? Our two original recipe ships um, that are to our twin balconies that were put in the water in 2010 and 2011, and we completely refurbished them. You know, I was on the Amabella in 2012, and that ship was beautiful then. Well, I can't imagine how more beautiful it's going to be now when she's completely redone. Where does Ama travel? Well, you know, we do the Doro. We have two beautiful itineraries and two beautiful ships and they're smaller. They're only 102 passengers. And I have to tell you that if you've got the Doro in Portugal on your bucket list, I highly recommend you talk to your travel market uh, square um, advisor soon because the, the Doro is probably running the first close and first and second, right? We do five beautiful itineraries in France. And of course we do the rivers of Europe. And we're gonna talk about the Danube, one of the longest rivers in Europe, all right? From north to south. Now, the only two rivers that we do not do in Europe is the Po and the Elba. And the reason why we don't do them is because of the water levels. They're just too unpredictable for you. In 2009, we started Vietnam and Cambodia. And we added two years ago, Thailand is for a pre and post for you. In 2013, we added Africa. And if you don't have Africa on your bucket list, please do so because this itinerary is quite unique. We give you five choices, all right? Uh, we start in South Africa and Cape Town, Johannesburg. We fly you to Botswana where you will board the beautiful Zambezi Queen. Um, the Zimbabwe Queen is 14 suites, 28 passengers, right? Then we sail to Chobe for four nights. 
then we take you to Victoria Falls. And after that, you're either doing your safari in South Africa, Kruger National Park, East Africa in Tanzania, Rovis Rail, right? A beautiful Rovis Rail where you will do somewhat of a safari, right? And you have a choice of doing a Wanda where you could do the gorilla trekking, right? What I'm very, very excited about is Egypt. We're starting that in September of this year. And I've had Egypt on my bucket list since seventh grade. So I'm really excited about it. But let's talk about the Danube. And you know, there are four seasons of the Danube. There's the spring, which is an absolutely beautiful time of the year to be in Europe, right? You've got the beautiful summer months, you've got the fall, and you've got winter Christmas markets, right? And, you know, the fall, we do have a lot of uh, wine cruises on the Danube as well, as well as an early spring. So kind of look at that with some itineraries on the Danube. So no matter what you choose, but let's talk about what's new for 23. Now, we've got two beautiful itineraries that we're bringing out, the celebration of classical music on the Danube and the majestic capitals of the Danube. Okay, where you will actually listen to concerts it, it's all over the place, you know, not only in Vienna, which is the, the capital of music, you know, um, but all over in Vaslava, in, in Budapest, right? And two exciting land packages to offer you, Krakow in Poland and Salzburg, Austria. And then, of course, we've got the gems of Southeast Europe doing the Christmas uh, winter markets. And I want to tell you this gems, which is the southern part of the, of the Danube, is a magnificent. And, you know, let me show you a map. We also do some theme cruises besides the Christmas markets. Celebration of wine, which I talked a little bit about. We're doing Jew some Jewish heritage cruises. Music. And of course, what's very, very popular right now is the multi-generational family uh, group, group, groups because we haven't been able to see our families and families are getting together. And this is a perfect, perfect way of being able to share experiences on a river cruise. Kind of, you know, you meet in the morning for breakfast and then you can all go your separate ways and meet again for dinner, right? But let's talk about the Lower Danube, which to me is the gems of Southeast Europe. And these five beautiful countries were all behind the Iron Curtain at one time, you know? So we can get to explore them now. And they've, they've actually blossomed over the years. You know, when they were first opened up, you know, they were kind of dark. And now they're just really into welcoming people and the beauty of the Lower Danube. And I highly recommend that if you have not been to any of these countries, put this on your list. Because starting in, in Vienna, going to um, Bulgaria, going to um, you know, Hungary, Croatia, um, and then you'll have the opportunity also to experience, if you want to, Turkey, Istanbul. Okay. So on the gems of Southeast Europe, I'll talk a little bit about the two post itineraries that you can choose from. Okay. But as we sail, we're going through the Iron Gates. Can you imagine carving that beautiful, beautiful structure in that mountain? I mean, this is uh, in that piece of rock. It's, it's almost like our, um, the president's uh, in, in South Dakota, right? But this is, Rushmore. Thank you. I, my mind went blank. Thank you. <laughs> and I had been there. <laughs> but yes, can, going through that and it's a very narrow passage. And it's very, it's very lovely. All right. But you go to the Iron Gate Gorge. And now what we're adding this year also to to our Gems of Southeast Europe itinerary, as well as for 22 and for 23, we, or we're, we're adding Belgrade in Siberia, in Serbia. And this is quite unique. And one of the things that we do on in the Gems of Southeast Europe is we have lunch off ship. So you get to experience the foods and the foods are, are they're delicious, they really are. And this fortress 
in, in Serbia is this is an exclusive for us. Nobody else stops here and you will, our, our boat, her ship will dock, you will get off and you'll have the opportunity to explore this fortress. And of course I mentioned the foods. And in this part of the world, a lot of the cheeses, a lot of egg, right, as you can see, and you know, the various different types of cookies that you'll, and candies that you'll experience. A lot of gingerbread, you know, a lot of, use, they use a lot of honey, they use a lot of um, different types of cheeses and lots of tomatoes and cucumbers. So kind of different from, you know, the northern, the northern part of the Danube or in other parts of Europe. And they do have excellent wines in Bulgaria. But these are the two posts that you can do on the gems of Southeast Europe. And you can do them in 21, 22, or 23, whatever. Uh, we, we offer them Transylvania, okay? Or we offer Istanbul. And of course, from Istanbul is a gateway. You can certainly expand your horizons once you're there um, to, other, to other parts of Turkey or other parts of Greece, even going into Greece because they're right next, they're next door neighbors, right? But Transylvania, you know, we've heard of Dracula. This has been in a very, very popular post itinerary for so many. So again, if you're interested in the, you know, the Transylvania area, this is, the, this is your cruise, you can do a post. And as I mentioned, we're doing Christmas markets. We've never done Christmas markets down on the lower part of the Danube. So this, you know, we're starting this in 23, where we're gonna be doing the Christmas and winter markets. And so many people forget that, you know, the Christmas markets have always been, you know, in Nuremberg and in, uh, Budapest and in Vienna. Well, they are also in all these other beautiful cities in Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania, right? Besides um, Bucharest. So the Upper Danube is a little bit different. You know, the Upper Danube has more castles. Uh, it's more, has more wineries that we will visit. And look at all the beautiful cities here. And yes, we are going to if you do a pre or a post, you'll be in the Czech Republic, right? Yes, you'll be in Slovenia, you'll be in Hungary, you'll be in Austria, you'll be in Germany, right? So you are in these countries as well on the Danube. So the, these countries, there's like nine countries that, that hover on the Danube from the north to the south. And we are going to experience those. And, you know, in, in our itineraries that we offer on the Danube, you know, the legendary Danube, the romantic Danube, the blue Danube discovery uh, are just a touch. And we've been offering them since, the, since we were founded in 2002, all right? But these are, and every year we add different itineraries, different places that you, we, you can, you can visit with us and, and I'll talk about our tours in a little bit, but just to kind of give you a taste of, you know, the Danube. And if you do a pre or a post, which we offer, right? And one of the unique things about uh, AMA Waterways, which is an AMA Waterways exclusive, is your tour manager, you will meet your tour manager at your hotel when you arrive either as a pre and your tour manager will be with you on your pre, take you to the ship, and also be on your post. So you, Prague, Budapest, Munich, these beautiful cities, these iconic cities can be used. You can do them as a pre or as a post on your itinerary, whether it be, you know, the Blue Danube discovery, whether it be um, legendary Danube, all right? So, but one of the things that we are I'm really excited about with this one, and is just, we're just learning all about this, is the classical music on the Danube, right? It's gonna be for uh, seven nights. It's gonna be in the Budapest to Vienna or reverse, right? So some of the things that you're gonna be able to experience on this particular, if you're into music, um, you've got the opera house in Budapest, right? In Vaslava, 
you know, we from Budapest, we go to Baslava, where you will have the opportunity to not only do the walking tours, but as you're doing the walking tour, all of a sudden, you know, you'll see musicians pop up and play. Um, and they'll change garbs as you're going into various different, like say for an example, if you're going into the palace or the, or the castle, you know, the, they're gonna change garbs and they're gonna play music for you. Uh, Vienna, you'll have classical concerts there and you go into this beautiful opera house, right? Salzburg, you, you know, and Vienna, of course, you're gonna meet there where you have all these beautiful composers have, you know, have resided there and created music there. So you're gonna go to their homes, for an example, Mozart's home, you'll visit that. Strauss, okay? then in Vienna, we have the concert, then we go to Salzburg, which is the birthplace of Mozart. You'll visit the house, you'll hear music, you'll have a recital, so it's all about music. And then of course we visit the Melk Abbey and you will have a choir performance there. So this is a, a new, brand new itinerary for us. It'll be out in 23. It's, you can book it now, all right? And we are also offering three nights in Krakow. And you will not only be able to experience, you know, the city of Krakow itself, but you will also be able to go to Auschwitz, you know, the uh, concentration camp. But one of the things to note even though this land package is specifically, you know, we, we've kind of cued it for the classical music on the Danube. Anytime you are in, um, if you have a family group that wants to do Krakow, we can actually do that for you, right? As a post or a pre going into Budapest. And there is a sailing season that we are doing this for um, in 23. So again, And then we've got some beautiful Vienna pack, land packages to offer you as a pre and a post, all right? So again, if you wish to spend some time, additional time in Vienna, and who wouldn't? It's a beautiful walking city. It's, it's got some, not only beautiful shopping, but you know, you've got the Schoenberg Palace, you've got museums, you've got the Opera House, which you will experience on this musical cruise. And again, that, the picture that you're seeing, of that is the uh, Vienna Opera House. And then of course, Budapest. It is also part of the magical capitals on the Danube in Budapest. And I always say we never spend enough time in Budapest. It's a beautiful city. It has so much to offer. Um, and we, like I said, we, it's a walking city. Um, and it's got the opera house there as well as the church. So what you will see on the magical capitals, so only, so only a five night cruise, right? So you will be start in, in Budapest. And again, you could start in Krakow if you so desire. And we do Budapest, Baslava, Vienna, and then we disembark in Vienna. So you could actually, but then we can take you to Salzburg if you want to do a um, post or a pre, you know, for that matter. But again, and that's the Schoenberg Palace. It's beautiful. And getting a tour of that and having a concert played in that. Now, one of the things that we are also doing is a Salzburg package. And this one is, it's kind of like, we like to say it's the Sound of Music theme because, but it's the movie, right? <laughs> You're going to actually um, go into, the, the, have a walking tour of where Mozart's, the, the, his birth house, all right? You're going to go where they filmed the sound of music, all right? And also the possibility of, it's an either or tour of the Red Bull. And I'm sure we all know Red Bull, it's an energy drink. Um, they actually sponsor so many sports uh, and from race cars to to airplane whatever and sports teams and we would visit they have an actual hangar in Salzburg where all the memorabilia are from years and years and years so again that's um, 
we can visit that as well. And of course, then we go to Munich, Salzburg to Munich, and you can spend some extra time in Munich. So this is what our three night Krakow package. I mean, this has been on, I think a lot of people's bucket lists and been requested a number, number of times, uh, but we are gonna be offering this starting in 2023. It's gonna be three nights and we will drive to Krakow from Budapest. It is about a six hour drive. And we will stop in between, yes, All right? You'll get the Krakow city tour castle visit the, the Jewish quarter, you will visit the factory of Schindler, all right, and St. Mary's credit. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing, I, I, this is one of the things I really want to do. And then you have some free time there. And of course, the visit to Auschwitz. Yes. And then you fly home. Or you would do, a, you can also do a pre, as I mentioned. And anytime you are doing going into Budapest or out of Budapest, we can arrange that, right? Going into Krakow. Now, we also do Christmas markets on the Danube uh, with the Ama Magda. We do the Magda on the Danube. We do uh, an iconic, a regular, what we call the regular Christmas markets on the Danube. And then, of course, our magical Christmas markets. And it is a very magical time to be in Europe. And Christmas markets will start anytime. You know, sometimes they start about the 15th of November and they will go past New Year's. You know, Budapest has one of the longest um, Christmas markets and it ends actually New Year's Day. So again, if you want to do our, our New Year's cruise, um, you, will, you will be able to experience some of the Christmas markets. Vienna, for an example, has longer Christmas. Markets. And we're hoping because, you know, the Christmas markets didn't happen last year that they kind of extend them and maybe start earlier because so many people are, are wanting to do them. And this is the perfect cruise for your multi-generational, you know, where you have the grandkids and the grandparents and the, and, the, and the kids all together. And it's fun for everyone. And Santa Claus does come on all of our Christmas markets cruises. And what we are doing, we are, are actually going to have a 14 night Christmas market cruise. We're calling it the Grand Danube, all right? And it will, we have two sailings. It will be either starting November 23rd to December 11th, and December 11th to, the, to Christmas Day, right? And you will be visiting all these beautiful cities with have gorgeous Christmas markets, right? And what you're looking at right there is Vienna, one of the markets in Vienna. Vienna has, oh, let me see, they have the, they have at least six different areas, if not seven different areas where there's Christmas markets for you to explore. Okay. And why River Cruise with us? Well, number one, no matter what season you're with us and no matter what river you're on with us, it's our tours. You know, we give you choices, not options. Choices are free. Options will cost you money. And Every time we stop, there's a tour, it's included, all right? Um, so whether it be you know, a musical tour, whether it be a bike tour, whether it be a, a wine, wine tasting, or just a walking tour, then you choose between, do you wanna be part of our gentle walkers, my regular walkers, or do I, I call them my power walkers because they just wanna get through the tour and they wanna go either shop or go to something else. We give you quiet, our quiet box headsets. So you don't have to get up close and personal with your tour guide if you don't want to, all right? We have late risers. Again, we wanna sleep in, it's your holiday, do so. We also have independent tours. We started that two years ago, right? Where you, you don't wanna be with your tour guide, but you wanna, you wanna explore on your own. Well, you can do that. We'll give you a map. We'll give you some suggestions of places that you should kind of see while you're there um, and what time to be back at the ship <laughs> because if you're not back at the ship and we leave you'll be ubering it to the next next port right <laughs> but we have bicycles every single one of our european ships except for the doro and of course vietnam has 26 bicycles 
and we even have children's bikes, all right? So if you are doing a multi-generational, we have children's bikes. The bike paths run all along the rivers on, uh, in Europe, no matter what river you're on, okay? And our bike tours are, they're not the heavy duty, you know, 50, 100 mile bike rides, no, no, no. They go anywhere from three to say, I think our longest one is 15 miles. And you don't have to do the whole thing if you don't want to, or you could take about a bike yourself and just tootle around, okay? And we also offer hiking excursions. Your hiking stick, do a hike with a guide, all right? We also have a wellness coordinator on every single one of our ships. Licensed in Europe, we do aerobics, tai chi, yoga. On beautiful days, we do them on the sun deck. If it's not so nice, we move all the furniture in our lounge area and that's where we do it in the morning. We have fitness centers on every single one of our ships and our wellness coordinators will have fitness classes that you can sign up for. Okay? So, or you could just go down yourself and do your own routine. Okay? And food. Well, some things have changed Okay, a little bit with COVID. You know, our breakfast and our lunch used to have beautiful buffets with our menus on the table as well. But because of COVID, we've eliminated the buffets. And what we have are what, we, what we're kind of calling our action stations, all right? So for breakfast, when you come down for breakfast in the morning, you'll be served some fruit, breads, sweet rolls, etc. cetera, uh, your juices, your juice of choice. You'll have your menu in front of you. Um, and you'll also be served your coffee, tea, whatever it happens to be. And our action station might be eggs made to order. It might be a pancake waffle station, right? Um, your choice, or you could order from the menu, okay? Everything on board is locally sourced. It's fresh. We make everything, even those rolls that they put in front of you are made fresh daily, right? Um, the only thing that is not made on board is our ice creams, and that comes from a Belgian dairy, okay? With the, with breakfast, we are still will offer you our sparkling wine. So you could start your morning off with your mimosa or sparkling wine. Lunch. The action stations might be a, you know, a pasta station, a sushi station. Um, but upstairs in our lounge area, we are going to be doing hamburgers and brats. All right. So, but, and, and then we'll also have our menu on the table in our dining area. Now, we are going to be putting grills on all of our ships. So again, El Fresco dining. So we may have, we may have barbecues on and fun things going on on our sun deck periodically during the course of our cruise, okay? With lunch, as well as with dinner, and dinner is menu driven. You know, it's usually three items on the menu, um, but we always available are filet, salmon and a chicken breast with a Caesar salad and our wonderful French fries. And no matter what meal you're at, I highly recommend our French fries or potato wedges. Some people prefer those. They're delicious and I do miss them. Um, but with breakfast, I mean, with, I'm sorry, with lunch and dinner, we offer unlimited free flowing beer, wine and soda. You have a choice between a red and a white or both, whatever. Uh, they're changed on a nightly basis and it's regional. It's, you know, it's unlimited, free flowing. You know, I tell my husband at breakfast, I mean, I'm sorry, at lunch, I'd like to say breakfast, uh, but with dinner, I, I only have one glass of wine. They just keep filling it. And do not be afraid to take that glass of wine, that beer out of the, our dining area, go up to our lounge, go up back to your stateroom, go up to the sun deck. We don't stop you at the door, okay? Also on every single one of our cruises, on journeys, you will have the opportunity to have a Shen dinner. And, you know, the Shen organization is an association that was kind of founded back, I think, in the 12th century. It was extremely popular in, um, you know, Europe back then. It kind of lay dormant for about almost 500 years. It was brought back uh, in the 50s and is quite popular not only in the States as well as in Europe. Right? And Rudy was inducted into that back in 2010. And he would like every single one of his guests to experience a Shen dinner. And it's quite lovely. It's quite 
delicious as well. So, and if you have a dietary need, all we have, just tell your associate, your associate there at Market Square what it is, and we'll make note of it in your, uh, in your reservation. And really, depending upon what it is, if it's gluten-free, you know, salt-free, et cetera, or if it's a special needs, our chef will actually sit down and talk with you. Now, we are known for our chef's table. And every single one of our ships, except on the Doro, which is el totally El Fresco dining, uh, has a chef's table. And on my smaller ships in France, 22 to 24 guests, my twin balconies, 24 to 28, and my Amma Magna, which is on the Danube, uh, has 36 guests. And this is an alternative dining for you. There's no upcharge. It's five courses. It's wine paired. And as you can see, the chef cooks in front of you. All you have to do is make a reservation when you board or maybe the next, next morning or whatever and say, oh, I'd like to have dinner there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Not a problem. And this slide I'm really kind of proud of and proud to talk to you about because, you know, the Ama Christina uh, was the first river cruise ship to receive the Green Award. And she received that back in 2019. And ever since then, every single one of our European ships has received the Green Award. And you know, when Rudy has designed our ships from the get-go of the Amadagio, the first ship that we've owned, all right, he was concerned about the carbon footprint that we're leaving our future generations. And he's designed our engines so that they are so fuel efficient that we probably spend more money on our bandwidth to keep you connected um, than we do uh, on our fuel. So now this is what our ship, twin balconies look like. This happens to be the Amalucia and she is in the water, all right? She is 443 feet long and 37 feet wide, the twin balconies. That is what in 2008, people who control the rivers and lots of Europe said to all of us river cruise companies, you can now build your ships that long, right? Still 37 feet wide because of the locks, right? Because in the past, which is my smaller ships in France, they're 360 feet long and 37 feet wide. The Amalucia is 154 passengers, right? So my twin balconies are either 154 passengers or my twin balconies that were are built between 210 and 215, 2015, uh, are 164 passengers. Okay. Now, let me show you what I, oops, so sorry, what our staterooms look like. We've got suites and they are either 300 or 350 square feet. And my 350 square foot uh, suites can become a quad because that sofa that you see is also a double hide bed and all my suites on all my ships have bathtubs, walk-in showers, and du dual sinks. My twin balconies, they range in size between two, 210 square feet or 235 square feet. And my 235 square feet cabins, which are in the left-hand corner, can also be a, uh, a triple, right? Now we have connecting cabins, so if you're traveling with friends and family and you want to be connected, all you have to do is have your uh, advisor request one for you. And we also have just plain French balcony, which are 170 square feet. And on every single one of my ships, I have 18 of them. They have the same amenities as my twin balconies do, except they don't have the actual uh, veranda. They just have the big wind, uh, kind of a patio window that slides open, all right? So on my twin balconies, you can have your French balcony sitting inside or you can have your veranda. All of my staterooms have mini fridges, which are stocked with water. Usually starts off with three bottles each, but you could have as much as you'd like. They all have plenty of places to plug in your USB ports, all right? As well as I have a magic drawer on every single one of my staterooms. And that's, you see right here, I don't know if you could see my pointer, it's right here. So right at the right hand side, um, it has a corkscrew, bottle opener, and two wine glasses because you're in Europe, right? You're on tour, you go shopping, you see a wine, you see a beer that you can't get in the States, purchase it. We don't confiscate it 
at, when you board the ship. We want you to enjoy it, okay? And then of course I have my, um, what I call my um, swan model. They're the fixed windows and they are 160 square feet. But again, they have all the amenities. They have your Apple TV. And that TV is not only your TV, your music, your first run Hollywood movies on demand, but it's also your internet with a keyboard and a mouse. But you heard me say that we spend more money on our bandwidth. All of our ships, every single one of them is Wi-Fi. You could be sitting anywhere and be connected. Right? So, and it is complimentary 24 seven. This beautiful ship that you see in front of you is the Emma Magna. This was Rudy's dream, really. It is, uh, it's still 443 feet long, but it is 72 feet wide. It can only do the Danube. If you have been on an ocean cruise and you, this is your first kind of thinking of, well, maybe I will try a river cruise, but I'm not quite sure. You might want to try the Danube, the Magna, because this ship is you the feel of an ocean cruiser, only you're on the Danube. Um, you know, the, the, the cabin sizes, my smallest cabin is two, it's 255 square feet, all right? We have a spa with two treatment rooms. We have a fitness center that is unbelievable. And then as you see here with my pointer, oops, outside on this deck, we have spin classes on the Danube, all right? It has a walking running track like all of my ships do, but it has the sky bar that pops up. It also has an elevator that all, it's the only river cruise ship that has that, goes to the sun deck. It's retractable, so we don't lose it under any of the, um, the bridges that we go under. And it's full balcony, right? So it has four dining areas. My main rest, yeah, you know, my main, main restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My El Fresco, yes, serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but dinner is a fixed menu, okay? Jimmy's is lunch and dinner, right? And my chef's table, of course, is dinner only, okay? And of course, we are going to be doing, you know, El Fresco dining on the sun deck as well. So 300, uh, 355 square feet are the majority of my cabins. All right, so full balcony, you have flat screen TVs, you've got the Apple computers, and every single one of my staterooms on the Yama Magna is given an iPad, All right? So you have the iPad for your use as you're, as you're sailing on the Danube, whether it be for the seven nights or whether it be for 14 nights, okay? And lots of storage. And we have six grand suites at 474 square feet. And we also have an owner suite that is 710 square feet. So, well, again, multi-generational, you know, the grandparents or the parents have the owner suite and everybody meets there, whether it be in the morning or at night, you know, as they all gather after, after tours, et cetera, then, you know, before the sip and sale, because every single evening Prior to dinner, we have what is called a sip and sail on every single one of our ships on every single itinerary. And what that is, is it's an open bar, right? My, my bartenders will have a specialty drink of the night, but you can have whatever you would like, right? And that's before dinner. Our wellness, as I mentioned, the spa, two treatment rooms, completely separate beauty salon and nail and, and pedicure salon. Okay. Much like that ocean cruise, right? Yes. And these are some of the journeys that we're going to be offering on the Magnum. All right. The combos where you could do longer cruises, right? So you can do the Magna on the Danube and the gems. So it's actually a 14 night cruise. And these are some of the dates that we're doing that. So you can do the upper Danube and the lower Danube on the Magna.
and what we are doing. Um, and I know it says March 31st of the, which is, you know, in a few weeks. Um, I believe that this is going to be extended, but this is an opportunity for you. If you, you know, a lot of people want to do longer cruises. Well, we're giving you this opportunity and you could save 10% on any second cruise, right? And it doesn't have to be right after one another, much like my, my French, if you're in France, you can do a back-to-back -back France, you know, because they start on Thursday, they end on Thursday, so you could start them. But say for an example, you want to do the, the Danube and you want to do the Rhine. Well, you can do that, but you have time in between. You want to see certain cities. You want to do certain things. Be our guest. Believe it or not, your travel advisor with, <clears throat> excuse me, Market Square, <coughs> excuse me, can call our reservations and say, I have a client that would like to do, you know, the Rhine, the Danube, maybe do the, the, the Doro, et cetera. How, how can I combine these? We have an app that our res agents have, that there are actually over, over 7,000 combinations that we could put together for you to have a longer stay in Europe. So again, you will get 10% discount on your second cruise, plus you will get your past passenger discount and any other retail offer that we are offering, okay? So again, think about it. You've got the flight over there. You might as well stay, right? And we are offering some complimentary land packages until the end of this month. They have been so extremely um, popular. And one of them happens to be Prague, which is on the Dan off the Danube. Any one of our Danube itineraries, all right? <clears throat> so you've got the, the legendary, the the Romantic, you've got the, the Blue Danube Discovery, you've got the Magna on the Danube, you've got so many Danube itineraries that you can take advantage of as far as with Prague. Do a free, have your free three night stay, okay? And as I said, we are open. All of our itineraries are open for 2023 and we are offering early booking uh, rewards. So if you book a 2023 by June 30th, you get a 5% discount, all right? So what about the protocols now? Well, they change on an absolutely, probably daily basis. And, you know, we sailed last summer from July 2nd through J November 2nd, right? We had the Ama Cristina on the Rhine. Ehoy is a tour operator in Europe that contacted Rudy and Christine and said, you know, I know you guys cannot travel, but I've got Austrian, Swiss, and Germans that would love to experience a river cruise. They, and Ehoy chartered our ship, all right? We had to meet every single protocol that the Ama Christina, what country she was gonna touch, which was the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Austria, Switzerland and Germany. We met every single one of those protocols. Face masks, face coverings, however you want to call it, our crew 24 seven. The guests last summer wore them in the public areas and as they were going down to um, meals, right? To our dining area. Temperature checks by our crew all the time. Constantly during the day, we, um, the, the, our guests, when they boarded the ship and when they, when they went down for breakfast, in the morning, we talked about our social distancing. Luggage was sanitized prior to being put in their staterooms. And the one thing I think that, because we had no, not one incident, not one, one COVID problem, is because when Rudy designs our ships, every single stateroom, hallway, lounge, lobby, dining area has their own separate system. So you are breathing clean air, not somebody else's. Right? So if you are interested in what our protocols are, we don't know what they're gonna be for right now. We are still looking into because we are actually going to be sailing for that same European market starting May 12th. We still can't get there, you know? They're not letting us as, as Americans in. So, but again, Ihoi wants 
they have the Germans, the Swiss, and the Austrians that want to travel. So we've, we are going to meet every single one of those protocols. But if you're up, you want to know what the up-to-date ones are, amawaterways.com slash protocols. And we will meet every single one of them. And we are ready to sail. All we have to do is know them and put them in place. Because you were, attended this, um, you book any 21, 22, and I should have put 23 in there as well, and I will. I'll honor 23, all right? You book any Ama Waterways journey, book and deposit by March 24th of this month. I will put an additional $100 per person discount on your invoice, all right? So get it. All right. So, but I'm also going to tell you that I don't know, Ted Blaine has a Rhine cruise. If you're interested in the Rhine, he's got one in 2022, okay? from May 6th to June 2nd, a beautiful time of the year to be on the Rhine. It's the captivating Rhine. It's going from Basel to Amsterdam. You will have the opportunity to start in Zurich, go Zurich, Lucerne, Basel, or you could start going in, flying into Madrid and going into the Como, right, as a pre, into Basel. And then, of course, spending some extra time in Amsterdam. Okay. It's a beautiful itinerary. So I'm open for Q&A, if anybody has any. Well, first of all, Mary Margaret, that was extraordinary. I'm so excited about the Danube. Uh, I was lucky enough to do the upper Danube a few years ago, but I'm very excited about the lower Danube and that the gems of the southeast. Oh, looks great. Oh. I would do that. I, I did it in 12 on the Amabella, right? I would do it again in a heartbeat. I can't wait to go back and do it. I can't. You know, and, so and the, the Krakow extension, I think, is extraordinary, too. Yes. So, excellent. Well, there, there were some uh, questions that came in. So, you know, let's say we've got somebody already signed up for a trip in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what is going to be the plan if the borders are not open later this year? Well, you know, we, we have suspended our sailings through April. And if the if they are not allowing us to um, to sail, I mean, to arrive there or, or be there, I will do the same thing as we did in 2020. Uh, we will offer your clients a, um, they can move. I mean, they can move now if they, if they don't feel comfortable sailing in 21. We are moving them, no questions asked, all right, to 22. If they're in a, on a June sailing and they, they, we will move them to an October sailing if they want or a September sailing if they want. No questions asked, all right? Um, if we happen to, if they're on a May sailing and it's suspended, we will offer them the same uh, you know, thing that we did last year where we will have, um, they will get 100, our FCC is 115% of whatever they have paid on the waterways. So um, they will have uh, that, we set up kind of, it's almost like a bank, <laughs> the bank in, in Ama waterways, they have 115% of whatever they paid um, to, to spend on their next cruise. All right. So if, if that, um, if things get extended out further beyond April, um, when do you generally know? Is it, is it a month before? Is it three months before? Do you, do you know that? We suspend our sailings 45 days prior to departure. Okay. So any May sailing should probably come next week sometime. Okay. If we're going to suspend it. Perfect. Okay. Um, do you think you're going to be requiring passengers to be vaccinated? We will go with whatever the countries requ require. So it's whatever the protocols are of the countries and the airlines, you know, we, we have to deal with the airlines and we have to deal with the countries, the governments. And if the governments say that you are, cannot come into this country, you have to abide by what the country rules are, not sure. necessarily it's AMA rules, it's the country rules. Right, okay. Um, and if, if people wanna upgrade their airfare, is it poss still possible to do that? Of course, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that could be done pretty much any time prior to final payment or? Sure, as okay. if seats are available. Yes, absolutely. Sure. sure. 
Um, and I know uh, Susan asked a question about doing an information night for those people who are registered. And yes, we will definitely have uh, information nights for those that are registered. Um, but again, your specific questions, we are more than happy to um, entertain at any time. Uh, let me just look and see if there's any other questions that came in. And I don't see any others. So thank you again very much, Mary Margaret. Great presentation. Very excited about uh, some of those options uh, for, for 23 with Krakow. Uh, really, really cool. So thanks again, everybody. And thank uh, you. We'll, we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Yes, bye-bye.